on a recent trip in from uh, pretty deep water, we think we went out to about 120, 130 feet of water. Uh, I was kind of showing the uh, boat owner, Bob, and uh, one of his friends, Tony, um, kind of what to look for when you're looking around for spots and what's on the bottom. And I'm, I'm a little bit proud of this. Um, on the way in, I was sitting up in the front of the boat, and Tony comes running up to me. He's like, man, we just ran over something big. I'm like, well, what are you, what are you, what are you saying? So I, I ran to the back of the boat and look at the depth finder, and he's like, look at this. It's this nice solid red showing some fish above it. And I'm like, yes, that's exactly what we're looking for. And this is while we were on plane, probably going 32, 34 miles an hour. It was a very calm day. So this stuff kind of shows up a little better. Uh, so what I did is uh, he has a touchscreen unit. And on most, most of these touchscreen units, now you can touch the spot that you see, even if you're on plane, and it will give you the GPS coordinates here. And so we were, you know, almost a mile away at this point. Um, but I was like, wow, that's that's something serious because the uh, Death Finder is not even zoomed in at all. So this is coming up off the bottom. It was about, you know, almost 80 feet deep. Um, and we're, you know, 0.8 miles away from this spot. So I touched it, took a picture of it. And I'm like, I'm definitely going to check this out in the future and, and kind of see what we're working with. It looks like something serious. And, and if you're on plane and you see something that's a bit longer like this, you know it's a pretty big area. So I went back a couple days later uh, on a different boat, and I decided to send my GoPro down. We, we ran over the spot and looked very rocky. A lot of fish up in the water column, a lot of fish down on the bottom. So GoPro's going down, and I'm like, I got to know what's up in the water column. The bite wasn't real good. Um, a lot of current. We are on a new moon. So GoPro's going down. Kind of start to see fish. This is probably about halfway down. You know, 80 feet of water. I'm like, that looks like a big red snapper. I'm like, yep, it's definitely a big red snapper. So, as the GoPro's going down, another red snapper. These red snapper were coming up to about 40 feet below the surface. Um, real high up. Normally, that means they're being aggressive. For whatever reason, they, they didn't seem to kind of want to, you know, eat what we were offering. I wasn't really planning on Red Snapper being this shallow, especially this big. So we weren't targeting them. But pretty awesome to know for the future. So GoPro's going down. This spot is probably about the size of a football field. Um, lots of hard bottom all the way around. And you can start to see some fish here. Another Red Snapper. You can see the, the edge of the rocks. And then there's sand. So as you're coming up on this rock pile, it's, it's definitely noticeable on the on the depth finder. So you can see fish here. Red snapper, red snapper, mangrove snapper, more red snapper. It's loaded. So it hits the bottom, you know, amberjack. Sign that you're on a really good structure. One thing I noticed is, you know, as we were kind of dropping some baits down, this grass, we're getting up a lot. Um... So if anything that hit the bottom, you were kind of getting into grass, which is, you know, a bit of a problem when your your baits aren't staying clean. So in that case, if I had, you know, I probably should have done this sooner, is try to not let your bait hit the bottom. Keep it, you know, five feet off the bottom. Because you see these fish, they're not necessarily all the way down, but they're pretty close, especially snapper. They'll eat baits up off the bottom. And so this spot, big rocks, covered in grass, but a lot of little bait fish, a lot of life. Let me just go back here real quick. So you got triggerfish, you got amberjack, you got red snapper, mangrove snapper. Um, on the left here, it's another red snapper, just, you know, checking out. There's also some angelfish right there, very colorful. They show their colors underwater. Uh, did I miss it that time? But there's a yellowtail snapper as well. And so what we were targeting this day is... is mangoes and I was chumming you know pretty heavy but the current kind of made it difficult um, so scamp grouper um, almaco jack different type of uh, amberjack family so you can see these mangrove snapper red snapper kind of all around this spot but real hard bottom big rock pile something I'm definitely going to keep in the future uh, this grass seems to be hanging out in that you know 85 to 100 foot mark right now because one of the other spots we ran to just a couple miles away had a very similar, you know, look to it when we were bringing some of the baits up with grass. Mm. So as you can see, lots of little bait fish. Um, lots of little tropical fish down in this stuff. But real 
cool spot. So, you know, keep in mind while you're running to, to be looking at that depth finder. And even if, if you have new units and new machines, you can touch screen and show where that GPS mark is. It, it has a very good memory to be able to do that. Um, so more red grouper, tons of trigger fish, tons of snapper. Just one of the cooler finds I've, I've had recently. And so since the bite wasn't very good, uh, what we decided to do was just kind of let the boat drift back. We were on anchor. Uh, and so I, I was like, let us let me reel this up a couple feet off the bottom as we drift back just to kind of get a profile of what this spot looks like. Uh, so I'll fast forward here while I do that. And so here you can see a, some, a bunch of fish trying to you know attack a bait on the drop. So if you watch... When you see them like that, they're bam, bam, bam. They're all hitting, trying to hit the bait going down. But what we were noticing is these fish weren't very aggressive. They were just kind of playing with the baits, not, you know, taking the whole thing. And it happens. If that, you know, is a situation you're running into, so there's a trigger fish going after another bait over there, you can actually see the shininess right there. So trigger fish kind of hitting this bait. So if, if you're getting, you know, a lot of taps, you, you almost want to, use either a bigger baits because you're probably getting some smaller fish or b downgrade your tackle a little bit go f you know down a, a line class from 50 to 40 pound test leader to 30 pound test leader uh, go lighter until you're getting bites uh, so there's the bait and you can see as it's going in the grass i mean the fish can't really can't really eat it there All right, so let me go forward a little bit to get the kind of the, the picture of what the drift was like. But as you can see, more fish just all around this place. I think these little fish are just little grunts. Um, so like if you go to a wreck and you see tons of schooling up grunts, very similar to what this is, just smaller, smaller versions of them. So file fish, trigger fish, grouper. So here the boat's starting to kind of drift back a little bit. It was pretty calm, so it's not gonna go back, you know, too fast. This is a good way to just kind of see what your your spots are like. If you have a troll motor, you can just, you know, take it off the, the troll motor for a minute. Uh, so there's another nice red snapper. Pretty cool to see red snapper, you know, decent size and, and as shallow as we were. So where we were sitting, um, the top of it was about 85 feet, I believe. And you can kind of see it, it slopes off a little bit. All right, so boat's starting to drift. Lots of grass, big rocks. Jacks, these are what I actually caught quite a few of while I was dropping down jig heads. Uh, they seem to be the most aggressive there. You think you got a nice big snapper, and then it's uh, one of those jacks. So just kind of a a look at the whole spot. Sometimes if you're you know letting anchor line out, you'll see more ledges, and, and it'll sometimes show you you know, where exactly you want to be when you go back and watch a GoPro later, you'll see all the fish you might be tucked up or a, under a ledge or on the bottom side of a ledge or the top side of a ledge. Um, so it's a good thing to do, just kind of reel, you know, if you're doing what I'm doing with the GoPro down on the bottom, reel it up five feet, 10 feet, and, and you can see what your spots look like. Um, so when we come to a stop, we actually end up on this little bit of a sandy patch. Um, our baits started coming up a little bit cleaner, so I think you know, we got lucky, but the fish just weren't real aggressive. So more snappers, um, some lane snapper as well. All right, those are lanes. There's a mangrove as well. 
Uh, the lanes, you kind of see the yellow in the fin and the, the stripes coming down them. Um, so a lot of mangrove snapper here, and that's what we were targeting. So it's so definitely a place I'm going to be coming back to in the future. Um, so this sand is, is probably if, you know, I was going to try to fish this spot again, I'd want to be on the sand right in the middle of all these rocks because if you can get a, you know, fish from on the bottom, it's going to be much easier to hook them on the sand as opposed to your bait being in the middle of all this, you know, grass. Um, so there's kind of grouper hanging out in the grass, grouper hanging, you know, all around the rocks. Very cool spot. So definitely keep in mind while you're running on calm days, you know, stare at that depth finder. If you see something that looks suspicious, go back and check it out because there's a good chance, you know, as flat as the Gulf of Mexico is, anything you see will turn into to something like this with a lot of rocks, a lot of fish, and it could you know potentially become one of your your future honey holes. And this is how you get that book of numbers, you know, growing. Especially if you know you're in hard bottom areas, do a little searching and you know, stare at the depth finder. Uh, so just a you know kind of a look at what you're seeing on the depth finder versus what you're seeing, you know, on the bottom. Keep in mind this was on plane, so the spot we're going over it pretty fast. But it was pretty cool to to be able to see something like this here, and then this is what it looks like on the bottom. So I hope you guys enjoy. I'm going to definitely be doing some more of these types of videos in the future. Um, you know, Don't mind subscribing. Check out some of the links in the description below if you want to view my website and buy some jigs that I make. And keep up with uh, some of the tips and tricks I'm throwing out there. Enjoy.